Yeah, it's on. You guys hear me good now? All right, there we go. All right, hey I'm, guys, I'm Bob Calloway, uh, Principal Architect at NetApp. Um, got Sean Cohen here from Red Hat and Mark Sturdivant from HP. Uh, today we're going to give you an update on what uh, has been going on with the Manila project um, during the Kilo cycle. So to give you a quick uh, agenda just to know what to expect, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of what Manila is, we'll go through a little history of why did we start it, uh, who, what are the corporate companies that are involved. Um, we'll look at like why would I want shared file systems in a, in a cloud. A lot of people kind of throw their eyebrows at it and kind of say, well, not really cloud appropriate. Uh, we actually think that there's a lot of use cases for Manila. Uh, so we'll go through those. And we'll talk about the new features that were introduced in the Kilo release in the context of those use cases. So not only will we tell you why you should care, we'll tell you things that we've been working on to make those use cases a reality. Then we'll go through some other features that we've added for end consumers of Manila as well as for the development community for Manila to make things easier uh, and be consistent with the rest of what OpenStack's up to. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, what we're currently working on in the Liberty release, what we're going to be discussing at the Design Summit here this week. And then we'll talk about, uh, really briefly, how do we get started with Manila? Um, so a lot of people hear a lot about it but want to know, how do I actually get my hands on the code, start exercising the API? Uh, there's a variety of different approaches, but we'll go through uh, probably the quickest and easiest uh, way to get going. And then finally, we'll just give you a reference to some other sessions that are going on here. I think we have uh, 10 other sessions here at the summit talking about Manila. Um, so where do you learn more information? So for those of you who aren't coming here and say, oh, Manila, there's this cool city in the Philippines. Why are we talking about it in OpenStack? Um, open, you know, Manila, very simply, for those of you who are familiar with what Cinder is for block storage, it's a, Cinder's a self-service provisioning and management API for dispensing block storage volumes out to consumers or tenants of a cloud. Manila is for shared file systems what Cinder is for block storage. So Manila dispenses in a fully self-service open REST API shared file systems out to tenants of a cloud. So literally the interaction is a user comes in and says, I would like a five gigabyte NFS share and I would like this particular network range to have access to this share. Or I would like a one terabyte SIF share. I want to do authentication with an Active Directory resource and I want to make sure that these tenant networks have access to that share. So Manila orchestrates and manages that, that level of inter interaction of storage artifacts that are provisioned by a, a you know, particular vendor's technology, uh, whether that be something from a NetApp, something from Red Hat, HP, and a variety of other vendors that have integrated with it. But that's, that's core, kind of its core purpose is to dispense shared file systems. Uh, one of the things that, before I jump on here, that I like to note is that you know, Cinder um, is a very complex service as it is, even though its goal is to dispense you know, block volumes. Manila actually has that networking component, which isn't always present in a, in a block storage environment. So you have to think about, how do I get shares exported into uh, the tenant-specific overlay network? So if I go into Neutron and I create a particular network, I may want to export a shared file system only to that uh, Neutron network or only to that Nova network that was created. So there's a little bit more magic that has to happen behind the scenes to make sure that the storage that's providing the shared file system can access that Neutron network or that Nova network and to make sure that all the plumbing is taken care of behind the scenes to maintain a secure connection uh, for both the clients and the provider uh, of that shared file system. So a little bit about who's been involved in Manila. Uh, you can see the long list of drivers on the left side of this chart. Uh, we entered the release with four drivers. Uh, one from Red Hat, one from NetApp, and one from EMC. We've added eight additional drivers, and I, I won't go through them one by one, but obviously you can see that there was an explosion in terms of the interest uh, in the companies that wanted to come and make sure that their products were exposed uh, through the Manila API. Uh, we saw the core team grow, I think officially double, uh, keep me honest here, Mark, but uh, double in size. So we added uh, new representation from SUSE, HP, uh, Mirantis, and NetApp. Um, a large increase in the number of reviewers, committers, and a pretty substantial line of code uh, count. And the thing, the reason I put those stackalytics charts up there is just to show the diversity. This isn't just a single corporate entity that's behind this service like you sometimes see in OpenStack. Uh, while NetApp did start this project uh, back in 2013, we quickly saw a lot of other vendors get interested in this, and it truly is a very diverse community uh, of a lot of different companies and a lot of different contributors. So I just wanted to call that out here. So again, like a lot of people still maybe scratching their heads and going, well, okay, I, I heard you, Bob, but why should I care about shared file systems in the context of cloud? Um, you know, we started this project back in 2013 because 
uh, you know, NetApp heard from our customers that, look, we want an open standard way of provisioning shared file systems. Your, your vendor-specific capability is great, but we really need an open standard way to move forward and, and to enable really a heterogeneous uh, infrastructure um, capability. So in 2013, we started this project. Uh, in mid-2014, we saw Microsoft actually go uh, public with, hey, they wanted to introduce Azure Files as kind of a first-class entity within their cloud deployment. And Amazon actually followed suit this April in announcing the Elastic File Services capability on their cloud. It's not often that you actually get to out-innovate Amazon. So I think this is a really cool point that this is the open source community as a whole got in, saw a problem, saw a bunch of use cases that they wanted to address, and really jumped on this project in earnest. And we've seen it really pay off uh, quite a bit. So when you think about the kind of the, the context or the table here that, that we depict in terms of what are the different storage services that are out there on a cloud, um, OpenStack you know, is aiming to fill those gaps just like the major hyperscalers that are out in the market today. So in terms of, again, so now I've talked about you know, what Manila is, why, why does Manila exist. Think about it in the context of these use cases. And we're going to go through some of these in, in a greater detail. Unfortunately, we've only got 40 minutes with, uh, with you guys today, so we'll, we'll go into a certain subset uh, of those. Uh, but you know, things like big data. I want to provision the underlying HDFS file systems for use for a Hadoop cluster. I want to provision an NFS share to underpin a MySQL or an Oracle deployment for a database as a service pattern. I may want to move existing legacy apps onto OpenStack to, get it, uh, to gain the advantages of perhaps a better cost uh, metric that I get versus a proprietary uh, virtualization system. Uh, being able to share data across tenants, this is something that we added in Kilo to make sure that data uh, actually can be visible and mounted and accessible from different tenants inside of a cloud um, and making sure that that's fully integrated within the keystone uh, constructs of feder uh, federated identity that you guys heard about at the keynote this morning. Um, thinking about bringing up shared file systems as a, a source of data for continuous integration, DevOps types environments, to make sure that you've got the right data at the right time for the workloads that you want to spin up in the cloud. And then finally, you think about really that, that picture of the globe that Jonathan had up on the keynote this morning of all of these different OpenStack instances and, and thinking about the truly hybrid cloud, uh, having the different endpoints with workloads spun up at the right time, at the right place, with the right cost and, and uh, performance characteristics. Shared file systems play an important part of making that a reality uh, for customers out there today. So all of these things are where Manila can actually be applied and, and provide real value uh, to OpenStack deployers. So to jump into a couple of these in a little bit of detail, one of the things as I travel around the world and talk to, to NetApp customers is we hear that a lot of customers have started and either, you know, they've got one guy in the back office that's written a set of Perl scripts that when he gets a ticket open, he'll go in and he'll run his little Perl script and that will dispense a SIF share, a new home directory for a user. Um, and there's that one or two guys in the company that know how that works. And if they decide to go take another job or uh, they want to switch to a different vendor's technology, they've got to reinvent that entire infrastructure. Not to mention that they break the consumer interface for that. So we see a lot of people very interested in Manila for replacing those homegrown or legacy systems with an open standard API. And so this is, again, when we thought about how could we introduce this capability into the market, being an open, ubiquitous API was absolutely a must-have. And so Manila really does provide that into the market, that same level of self-service, uh, create a share, delete a share, manage access to a share, all of those primitives in a, in a completely vendor agnostic framework, that's what Manila is all about. Um, some of the features that we added in order to support kind of replacing these uh, homegrown systems was to be able to operate in a variety of different network environments. So you think about for the, those variety of systems provisioning home directories or uh, provisioning NFS shares underneath databases. Um, in the kind of existing IT environments of, uh, of yesteryear, maybe it was a simple flat network topology or it was a, I need to carve it off and put it on a particular VLAN. Manila has to be able to interoperate with those environments whether or not Neutron is deployed and whether or not that share should be accessible on a given Neutron network. Neutron may not even be in the picture in this case if I'm replacing a homegrown system. So during the Keeler release, the Manila community added effectively a plug-in model uh, such that re regardless of what your underlying network topology is and what segmentation technology you like to use, whether it's a completely flat network, whether you want to aggressively go towards a VXLAN or, or GRE type environment, or if you're good with just flat, you know, regular old VLANs, Manila actually can adapt to any of those different network environments and make sure that the shares that it creates and manages are accessible on the right network at the right time. So this is a really powerful capability that we, uh, we added during the Kilo release. 
One of the other things we did in terms of addressing that kind of heterogeneous requirement uh, from customers is we added the capability to specify, uh, for drivers to, to specify the presence of resource pools. So recognizing that even you know, across vendors, all storage isn't created equal, and even within single products from, from different companies, all storage isn't created equal. So adding a, the pool support in this release allows individual products to expose a consistent definition of what is a resource pool. Uh, and individual vendors can, can add their kind of enhanced capability list to what the scheduler learns about. But effectively, at the end of the day, it's a standard interface for products to come in, advertise available capacity as well as additional capabilities, and to make that ubiquitous across all products uh, that want to integrate with Manila. Another use case that we uh, wanted to address was the movement of existing legacy applications onto OpenStack. Another thing I hear about from customers all the time is, I may be you know, deployed on a, a leading uh, virtualization technology. I won't name names, but you guys can probably guess who I'm talking about. Um, you know, it works. It's great. A lot of good function, but really, really expensive. So part of the reason that people look at OpenStack is, yeah, it's self-service. It's great. It's an equivalent for Amazon. That's wonderful. Frankly, a lot of it's just cost. You know, you look at IT budgets aren't growing a huge amount. You've got to figure out how to do more with less. And OpenStack provides a pretty compelling value proposition uh, to, to make that a reality. But just because I stand up additional infrastructure doesn't mean I, I have to be able to move the workload onto that infrastructure. And so making shared file systems a first class citizen in OpenStack really enables uh, workloads that are built assuming the existence of shared file systems to be able to move over to, to an OpenStack deployment such that I can get that lower cost, all of the benefits out of this new virtualization environment that, that perhaps an op OpenStack or KVM uh, might avail for me, all of that now becomes addressable for the applications that, uh, that I'm running today. So I don't have to rewrite those apps to, to use an object storage API. Perhaps over in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, I'll rewrite those apps to a Swift interface or an S3 interface, and maybe I'll change the, the way that they handle transactionality and a whole slew of other things. But there's a lot of apps out there that work today, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I have to figure out how do I move those apps onto the right infrastructure uh, to leverage the economies of scale and the cost benefits that are there. So when you think about, you know, the storage that underpins these legacy apps uh, today and, and even for new apps, you know, all storage is not creative equal. I've said that a couple of times now. And whether you think about that from, for example, like a performance point of view, a flash drive is not equivalent to a SATA drive or a SAS drive. In terms of the number of IOPS, the type, the latency profile that I get from that drive, the physical hardware is differentiated. And I need to make sure that when consumers use a storage service in a cloud, that they're able to access those differentiated tiers of capability. So I want to be able to, to say, look, for database workload that's highly latency uh, sensitive, I want to make sure that you provision that workload onto an all flash uh, storage product. And for you know, home directories that you know, there's got to be a lot of duplication, uh, and frankly, I, I, this, the capacity planning exercise and those things can sometimes be a little hairy. Maybe I don't want to, I'll use technology like deduplication or compression or thin provisioning to mitigate kind of the, the, out, you know, the capital outlay at the outset of that deployment. So I want to make sure that I can take advantage of the storage in order to address that particular use case. So during the Kilo release, uh, one of the things that the team worked on was really enriching the concept of a share type. So this is analogous to the concept of a volume type um, that exists in Cinder, but it's a way for an administrator to create um, a, a tier of service and to map in individual uh, capabilities into that tier definition. So if I wanted to create a gold, silver, bronze type hierarchy and have gold be all SSD, silver to be maybe SSD, but I'll turn on dedupe and compression, and then bronze or best effort is just, you know, it's going to use SAS drives and be cheap and deep from a provider point of view. I want to make sure that we, we avail that capability to an operator such that they can slice and dice the storage that exists to match the workloads. So Sean's going to talk a little bit more about how we want to, rather than just from a performance perspective, we actually want to map that to the application workloads itself. So Sean. Thanks. All right. So I like, I like the segue of comparing to Cinder volume types. And what it allows us to do in the block storage is actually to map the different capabilities we have when we connect any backend to OpenStack. OpenStack is all about being a pluggable infrastructure. And when we take um, uh, 
any type of backend that we want to expose, and we need to expose it all the way to the tenant level, right? And the way to do it, we've, we've done it in the blocks, for example, is using volume types. So share types is actually pretty much an equivalent, but it also allows us to bring this richness of heterogeneous, as you saw, we can actually already today have 12 different backends supported in Manila, uh, allow to create the service catalog to your uh, IT, but more important to the application, the workload. As you know, OpenStack is the infrastructure layer, and we are serving applications. And this is a key part to connect between the different workloads we have and segregate their needs using file share uh, service. Uh, so here we touched upon some examples. So one of the examples which is uh, uh, we see typically in Swift, like ar archiving, right? So uh, I can actually have different class of storage mapped uh, to my uh, shares archiving. Now, remember your use of as IT users, right? A lot of the day-to-day -day work you're doing can be is archived <laughs> because it's documents. It's, it's like raw files. Uh, you don't want to put it in a SSDs, right? Because that's a different share type. So we are able to actually to provide you the service when you need it, uh, but also make sure it's being stored on the right backend. And using the Manila API, we can do it pretty much transparently. Now, the key here is, is using Manila, OpenStack is also not just a pluggable infrastructure, but it's a scale out uh, 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 infrastructure. So we can actually use it for analytics. And you just heard like HDFS has a driver now in Kilo release. I can actually scale out my analytics workload running on Manila using the, the uh, and we actually have a talk this uh, uh, summit uh, with IBM that actually showcased one of the example, I think, is this one. Uh, using even containers in the context. So if you need to expose a file system to containers, right, how do you do it? This is where Manila comes into play. Today, if you want to do the same thing with block storage, how do I actually take the, the specific volume from Cinder and Muppet to different, uh, even containers, right? There's no way for me to do it today. Manila actually brings it out of the box already. So we can actually combine the goods of all worlds. We already have Sahara, for example, that has uh, Hadoop as a service. We have the HDFS driver. We have support, so out-of-the-box support for containers using file systems. And if you bring it all together, guess what? We can rock. And, and this is exactly, what's the number one use case in OpenStack? Who wants to raise your hand and say it? DevOps, right? So Manila actually mops beautifully into the DevOps model. And it's also both for development and CI and testing, right? So think about it all the way from your build environment and you need to create version control, right? You can use clones of Manila in Snap and give it to your developers or testing. So it speeds up the, the life cycle uh, uh, pretty much heavily and it's already there, right? We don't have to do a large investment in the code just to enable this. Um, Moving on uh, to another example, uh, the shared file system on demand. Uh, so we heard Bob mentioning uh, the progress we've done in Kilo release to, uh, uh, to accelerate it. But, but I think if we look at the, what brings us to the table when we talk about the shared file system, right? It's pretty much three things. It's the ability to deliver in speed, right? Faster time to value. I can provision in minutes and seconds and, and get the data where I need it in my cloud. Second, the flexibility. And I have a self-service. And if, going back to the DevOps uh, use case I just mentioned, if I'm a developer, I don't need to even go to IT. I can easily get my shares instantly, right? Uh, so I have all the flexibility I need to provide to my end users in the cloud. And lastly, and key import is the elasticity, right? And one of the things we've done, and we have uh, started to do in Kilo, and now it's going to be a focus in the Liberty release, is actually add the ability to expand the share. Now, uh, uh, Bob mentioned earlier Amazon Elastic file, uh, uh, system that was added, the EFS, this April. And one of the key things of EFS is the elasticity. And this is exactly what we're missing right now in Manila to get to that point, to get to parity, if you want, with Amazon. So the ability to actually both grow a share on demand, and, and if you connect that message to what we talked about earlier with the different backend support with the different share types, boom. If, I, if my backend can support like uh, the growth of storage or we, we're gonna deal with fin provision in the next release as well, this is all ties to the third part of being elastic. Um, 
so when we talk about another use case, so uh, pretty much tailored to DevOps use case, but the automation integration with an open startup API. This goes back to today's keynote about having one open API, which is standard across projects. And I think if we zoom into Manila specifically, we're actually leveraging an, uh, our investment in automation that we've done already using the, the REST API, but we also be able to leverage the automation tools for further integration. So if think about any tools you currently have in your environment that helps you manage your cloud infrastructure, connect the two of them together. We, Manila actually allows you to connect uh, uh, using the open API to do so. Um, so we talked about the elasticity, increase of flexibility, faster volume, and now let's look at another use case, which is done actually in the Kilo release, is leveraging heat. Uh, uh, um, as well. And if you look at the blue box at the top, now we have the, n the notion within HIT to utilize the Menina uh, templates for provisioning. All right, so going back to the use cases, we talked about big data, uh, we talked about database as a service a bit, but let's talk about it just more. So it gives us the ability to actually use uh, file shifts, uh, files, with file systems, but, uh, and Bob actually mentioned all the, if you will, legacy application that we're not being able to onboard OpenStack till now. So I think that's, first of all, one key use case that Manila uh, allows in the database as a service world, but it also adds the uh, uh, transparency and convenience of the database management, right? You just map a share, that's it. This is where, where it starts and this is where it ends. The next level, and this is Liberty and Beyond, uh, and, and Mark will go in more, more details, is integrating with other services, such as Trove. So it's not just about, yeah, you can run any database uh, uh, that relies on shared uh, file system, but you always be, you be able to tie Manila to this new cloud uh, as a service offering we have in OpenStack, and then you have, uh, 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 just like I mentioned there with, with the DevOps example. The last one is the hybrid cloud shares, and this is actually have two levels. One of them is the external components of share, right? So we, we going to, to this morning uh, um, keynote about the ability of getting external resources in, in time, et cetera. So I want to actually expand that in a hybrid cloud. When, you know hybrid cloud is, is the ability to us on-premise, uh, private, and public. And one of the things that we need is actually to migrate workloads. And, and how do we do it today in OpenStack? Okay, can anyone refer me? How do you do it? All right. So that's actually the future. We, uh, we're, and this is, we're not inventing and will. I mean, Microsoft are doing it, and that soon Amazon will be able to do the same thing. You can actually mount the, uh, the, the, the specific shares from external resources. It may be from your own premise to my public or my own premise to my private cloud. So that's a very key use case that we, we're going to see open the doors for OpenStack to onboard uh, and, and allow migration in. Um, and now, with that, I'm going to hand it off uh, to Mark, who's going to walk us through uh, uh, some of the milestones we've hit in the Kilo release, as well as uh, what's expected in the Liberty. Thank you. or I can yell. <laughs> so one thing I get from this picture is we did a lot. A lot went into Kilo. And really six month releases, they come and go pretty fast. I don't know about you, but to me it seems like just yesterday someone brought back a t-shirt from Paris for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you go through here, you see we've already talked about a, about a bunch of these things. We talked about share types. We talked about public shares going cross-tenant. We talked about things like plugging in with Neutron and Nova and Heat and Sahara and Trove. I'm going to talk a little bit about plug into Horizon and DevStack. You see Oslo up there with the underscore LE, LW, LI. Who recognizes what those mean? Any developers out there? You have minus one, right? And then they pay it forward a couple of times. Well, we're doing the things that OpenStack projects do. We've integrated with everything. Well, we've integrated with a lot, and we're using the OpenStack way of doing localization. We're doing OpenStack Tempest tests. We're fitting in. So over six months, 
Manila's gone from being incubated, not even part of OpenStack not that long ago, to being integrated, 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 integrated all across the board. One of the big things that we did this time for integration is the Manila UI. Now, towards the end of Kilo, we managed to get this to become an official project. It's part of OpenStack. It's actually owned by the Horizon team, but the core approvers are core from Manila and core from Horizon. So this is the Horizon-approved way of making Manila plug into the official Horizon UI. Uh, prior to this, we had a fork. We had a separate UI. We didn't really have a good answer for what if you want the latest Horizon and the latest Manila. But with Kilo, we have that. So if you're using Kilo, get the Manila UI. And um, that'll put us in a good position going forward to get the, all the latest features of Manila in the same project as all the latest features of Horizon. And if you're working on Horizon and you make changes, you certainly you won't need to manage the plugins. If you're working on Manila, you might be contributing additional functionality in this project. If you're out there, a developer, you're a free agent looking for a project to work on, feel free to jump in and work on Manila UI. Speaking of developers, another thing we did is the DevStack plugin, very convenient thing for developers. So instead of copying files around, it's just a one-liner and Manila plugs into DevStack. I don't think I need to talk more about that, but you can go to the wiki if you're using DevStack, fire that up. And uh, don't forget to bring in Horizon in the UI while you're there. Uh, one of the features that's more functionality is manage and unmanage. Now, for that hybrid cloud and for those legacy applications, you really, you're going to have existing shares that you want to bring into Manila. So everybody knows manage existing shares with Manila is a huge feature. And what we managed to do in Kilo is we made significant progress on this, enough so that it got in Kilo. So we have the API, we have a reference impl implementation, and we certainly have a lot of focus on this. What we're going to have to do is for Liberties, we need to focus on getting the vendors to implement this. So with that, I'll move on to Liberty. So, planned work for Liberty and beyond. One of the main focuses for Liberty is going to be third-party CI. We need to focus on quality. And we've seen from other projects, Cinder, Neutron, that as much testing as we can do with unit testing, as much gating we can do with reference impl implementations, we need to have the vendors run their tests also. And it's amazing now, I haven't worked on Cinder in a while, so when I go there now and I see how many tests get kicked off all over the place with every commit, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of testing going on. So this will be a big focus for, for Manila. We're not talking about the design sessions, we're just going to do it, but it's out there on the mailing list. We'll, we'll be discussing the specific milestones for requiring vendors per, to participate and um, make sure someone's assigned, make sure they're making plans, and make sure that they're able to start reporting um, the results of their tests. Um, so that's something that we'll decide as a community what those milestones are, but there's a very good proposal out there and we'll be talking about it shortly. For other focus areas for Liberty and going forward, um, it seemed very convenient for me to just grab the list for our design session topics. Um, those obviously aren't, it's not everything that we're working on. Uh, we already mentioned extending shares, but these are really the top of mind ones. So mount automation, everyone's wanted that for quite a while. So we'll be discussing it again. We want to make sure that self-service shares, once you add access to a guest, you really want the share to be mounted. You want it to be there. Um, share migration, administrators need to be able to move shares around. Replication for failover, we need to make sure we have the consistent and uh, flexible way of doing that that all the vendors can work with. Consistency groups, whether it's for replication or for snapshots, if you have a group of shares that need consistency in that, in that format, we just need to design that. We need to agree on that and do it cross-vendor. Thin provisioning is one of those things. Again, we need a consistent way of doing it and a flexible way so vendors can do it the way they need to do that. So we'll have a talk and get that design nailed down so that we can implement that in Liberty. Version to objects and API versioning, that's about smooth upgrades. So if you're a developer and you're interested in versioning, uh, version to objects, API versionings, I hope you can contribute, come to our design sessions or at least follow our etherpad. Um, if you're not a developer, you're probably glad to hear we're working on smooth upgrades. Fault feedback is something that we're all interested in. Um, relationships between shares and snapshots is another one of those things we need consistency across vendors or at least agreement in how to expose those APIs. And service image used by, used by uh, drivers that use um, 
you share servers. We're, we're doing some work to design to share that to make sure that's usable, leverageable. So quickly on mount automation, this is something this is something that everybody wants and it's been talked about in previous summits. Um, the, the concern here is that there are, there are security reasons why we can't just do it and there's also resilience uh, and, and what do you do with reboots and things like that. Um, so we've talked about a variety of ways of doing it in the past and probably didn't get enough attention during Kilo, at least that I know of. But now in the design session, we're going to have some proposals. We're going to bring it up. I think we have some very good possibilities for how we're going to tackle this. And I expect we'll make significant progress on this in Liberty. Replication. Replication is obviously a, a difficult one to challenge across vendors. So again, we'll have to get together and we'll have to decide. Now, we're not talking about replication at the block level. We're talking about replicating a share or a group of shares. But really, under the covers, vendors might be doing replication at the share level. They might be do re doing replication of volumes. So we have to figure out how do we expose that so that vendors can implement it? How do we make it so that users can get some, have a reasonable understanding of what they're going to get when they ask for a share and they ask for a replicated share? And then, of course, when you do fail over, you want a consistent result. So that's where consistency groups, I think we have probably a better handle on that. Again, we'll find out later this week when we're designing all of this. Um, but we, we need consistency groups for failover it, and for snapshots. If you're writing to a group of shares and you have to fail over or you're taking a snapshot, you want to make sure that write order is consistent. You want to make sure that you've got a consistent uh, look if you're moving that, from, that application from you know, one copy to another. So again, we'll design that. We'll talk about that um, Wednesday or Thursday. The last one I wanted to bring up is share migration. That's my Canada tie-in, much like the Canadian geese, for some reason have to migrate to California golf courses. Manila shares do something very similar, but it's administrators. Sometimes you have to move a share from one pool to another, from one back end to another, maybe even across back ends. Um, in this case, we've got some work already in progress. Uh, so we've made good progress on it, but we do need to get together. The design summit is perfect time to do that to make sure we have some agreement on what vendors can do what, how are we going to do this. And in this case, it needs to lead probably to, if the vendor can't do it, like migrating from one vendor back end to another vendor back end, we need general solutions that can do that. Migration is a great area because it can lead to other things like data copying for other purposes. It'll probably lead us to other features in Liberty or beyond, like retype. And um, again, it's something people expect. And I think we'll make progress on that in the very near future. With that, I'll right. hand it back to Sean. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so I don't have to tell you about the Manila Memento because you already saw that, right? I mean, the, the number of features that we are able to add in the last cycle, the number of drivers we had uh, uh, in, in the last cycle, it's, it's tremendous. And it almost say one thing, the need is there, and now OpenStack aligning, right? So we, we, all the work, beautiful work we're doing, and you're seeing here, is actually the fruits of the, of, of, of the work that align to the need. And you saw that earlier as well from, from the marketplace as well with commercial uh, offering. So how do I get started with Manila? That's my next thing. Uh, so I'm glad to say that uh, uh, the Manila is already available in the RDO uh, distribution, which is the community uh, 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 version already from uh, the general release. So you can go ahead and deploy it using Packstack. It's pretty easy. Uh, we're also uh, going to include Manila as a tech preview in the upcoming uh, Rolo SP. Uh, distribution uh, this uh, summer, so it will be uh, uh, already there, so customers will be able to start, test it and work with it uh, and open bugs and help us uh, uh, get the, the mature point that uh, Manila wants to get. And one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, speaking about the Manila momentum, is how to get involved as well. So you heard Mark, there's tons of areas that we need working hands uh, uh, to, make it, to make it happen. And that's the great way to get you involved. So please go on uh, uh, both to GitHub and the Wiki. That's a great starting place. We have uh, 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 Open Secondly Law and RC uh, weekly meetings. Uh, feel free to join us. And of course, we have uh, the 
uh, mailing list as well, which is key, right? If you want to impact, if you want to, even if you're a user, if there's features that you need, uh, please let us know, right? Uh, uh, the operation side of OpenStack is very important along with the devel development. It has to go hand in hand together. And going back to some of the sessions, so Mark mentioned all the different design talks we have around Manila, but I just want to copy, show you how many talks we have, which is general talks about Manila, and some of them are really cool, right? Uh, take big data analytics and dockers, the frilla in Manila. Uh, this is an IBM session, uh, uh, how you can actually scale out uh, um, Hadoop with Manila and containers. Uh, we also have Deutsche Telekom uh, uh, taking OpenStack share file storage to the telco cloud. So that's a different use case that we haven't talked about yet. The telco needs, right? It's not just enterprise application. Telco also has a big interest in Manila. So uh, I think today we were able to taste some of the key use cases of Manila, but this is only the start. And as you can see from the numbers of design sessions and talks we have on Manila, it's no doubt Manila time is now. And with that, let's open the mics for some Q&A. We still have, I believe, five minutes. All right. Yep. And we've, uh, we've got a couple of folks from the Manila core team, Mark, uh, Jing, Clinton, probably a couple more that I don't see yet. But any yeah. questions you guys have? Do we have a microphone we can provide? Oh, just repeat. Yes. Yeah, one there. So just for the folks on the, the video or that didn't hear, uh, the question was, there doesn't seem to be a, an API today to roll back a share from a given snapshot. So basically to restore a snapshot into an existing share. So yeah, for, for that, I don't know, you want to, I'll let the yeah, members that, speak to that. Yeah, you're right, it's not there. So you can create a share from that snapshot so you, you have one, but it's a new one. Right. And, uh, and what you, described is exactly what people would want to do. So we should, we should add that. We should put in a blueprint and, and uh, see if we can make that part of the core API. Okay. I, I don't see why we wouldn't want to. It, it can be vendor specific, like an extension. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it yeah. makes sense to, for that to be a core API. I mean, again, yeah. look at the parallel with Cinder. Cinder has a snapshot API, and it also has a backup and restore API. Does it make sense to have an explicit backup and restore API for shares as a whole? I think you can yeah. make a pretty strong argument that that does make sense. And then it becomes a question of, do I restore from a backup, or do I restore from a snapshot? It kind of comes into the semantics of what's a backup versus what's a snapshot. I won't go into that. But that, that type of a, uh, operation, I think, makes perfect sense. So Yeah, so definitely. Uh, jump into the design sessions this week, Jump, uh, throw a mail onto the mailing list, jump in the IRC meetings, that's the right way to engage and, and get us to, to start looking at that. All right, we have another question. Yes, uh, I wanted to know whether you have any kind of uh, SDN integration in the works, and if so, with which, SD, which SDN? So the question is, do we integrate with any SDNs? So we integrate explicitly with the Neutron API, so we don't have a specific hook to any other vendor-specific technology. Um, so whether you're using NovaNet or you're using Neutron, if you have a particular ML2 plugin that leverages Open Daylight or you've got an um, ML2 provider from, from Cisco or any uh, Juniper or Arista, whatever that provider may be, that's all abstracted by Neutron at the end of the day. Right. So in some sense, we support all of those a SDN providers mm -hmm. that support Neutron. It's a bit of a, a past answer to you, but, yeah. but, if, yeah. but effectively, we think that's the power of integrating in with the other open standards is that that community will innovate at their own pace, and when things come along, we'll just figure out how to take advantage of that. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Sure. And next question. Uh. Uh, hi there. Uh, you guys talked about Sahara and HDFS a fair bit. Um, does Manila support uh, pr provision for data locality, ensuring that your Nova compute nodes and say a Hadoop MapReduce are going to be physically co-located with nodes of your shared file system? So Manila today supports the concept of a, an availability zone, much like uh, you know Cinder and the other services do, in terms of ensuring valid export locations from multiple availability zones and managing that uh, access explicitly in that context is something that we're, we're figuring out in the context of the discussions around replication. Yeah. Um, because again, you, you want to make, make sure that the share is accessible in the particular cell or region or availability zone of the cloud that I have my workload deployed in and I don't want to have to cross a boundary to get access to a share. 
So adding in the, the additional management APIs and objects in the model to be able to support that is something that we're actively designing in the context of replication. So yeah. it's coming, I guess, is, is the short well, answer it, to that. And, and during Kilo, one thing that was added was allowing a share to have multiple export locations. So in the past, there was one export location for a share. Right. But now at least having the possibility to have more than one, um, you can have some of that locality. It's just we don't have a good way of communicating it. Uh, so that's not made general, but yeah. at least the different mount points are visible. Right, right. All right, uh, I assume we need to take the last question because uh, we need to respect so the You're the lucky session. guy, go yeah. ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'm looking at using Quotile, uh, um, Quotile 90 have system to pass through the outer belt system to guide a small cylinder. Sure. So if I understood your question correctly, Neutron perhaps is complicated. Some folks don't want to go down that road quite yet. Do we have the ability to just access a share over any layer three routable network? Is that a fair characterization of it? Ah, so, so like a VertFS driver, uh, effectively. Yeah, that's something that we've talked about in the community, and it goes back to that mount automation theme of how do we provide access. Um, you know, certain vendors may not be able to interoperate it and put their full support statement from a client point of view behind a VertFS driver. Um, but there certainly are advantages for an individual, uh, you know, guest VM on a hypervisor node to have that access intermediated in that way. So short, short answer is there's some trade-offs there. We haven't seen anyone in the community really come forward with that, um, but it's something that we have talked about in the past. In general, our network model allows for uh, you to create a share. If it's on an IP address that anybody can access, anybody can access it. Um, if you want to filter that down to you know, specific subnets or specific IPs, you can, security groups, you can do all that as well. But um, you know, like a VertFS style driver is something we've talked about but haven't implemented yet. So I think we're out of time. Thanks, guys, for yeah. coming. If you've got uh, additional questions, uh, like I said, we'll be up here at the end. Uh, appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.